Shadow and Bone is the first book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. In this video, I'll share my thoughts and review of this book. Before getting into it, spoiler warning for this book, and with that, let's get started. I'd rate this book a 4.8 out of 5. It was a really good book in my opinion, and I really enjoyed it. To give a quick overview of this book, it focuses around the Shadowfold, which is a swath of darkness that separates Ravka into two sides. It's been there for so many years, and we follow Alina Starkov, who was a mapmaker from the First Army. When Alina's group is about to cross this fold, she unlocks a power that claims her as the Sun Summoner, who is prophesied to destroy this fold. So now, let's talk about some characters. Starting with Alina, since she's our main character. I don't have any prominent emotions about Alina. I was always in the middle when it came to her character, and I think I was just okay with her. I've heard and seen a lot of people say that Alina was a frustrating main character, and I think I understand what they mean. There were times when I've just felt a bit annoyed by her for some reason, because she was the stereotype, I'm plain and ugly trope that YA books had. She's the, I'm not like other girls trope too, and she constantly compares herself to other girls like Zoya and Jenya, who were characters we'll get to in a bit. Despite that though, I think she's a pretty good character, and I do like her as a person. And now, let's head to Alina's best friend and boyfriend, Malian Oretsev. Okay, okay, so I know that the fandom has mixed opinions about Mal, and I absolutely understand that. There are people who fully hates and despises him, and then there are people who are in the middle or are neutral when it comes to his character, and then there are people who loves and worships him. For the people who loves and worships him, I think it's because of how they interpreted Mal in the books, or because the Netflix show changed Mal's personality so much and made him more likable. I'll admit it myself, I'll pick Netflix show Mal over book Mal any day because they changed some pretty mean things about Mal, which I'll get into in a bit. So how do I feel about Mal? Before jumping into the series, I already heard about the Mal hate and I've asked this question myself multiple times while reading this book. So in this book, I would say that I liked Mal. By the way Alina was describing his character, he seemed like a pretty good guy and he really was in this book. Even if he was a bit rude to Alina when they fought that night in the ball, I understood him because he was going through the grief of losing his friends and I just felt bad for him. So far, I do like the fact that Mal and Alina end up together because if you didn't know, one of my most favorite parts of fiction books is the childhood friends to lovers trope. And in this pairing, I think it's called Malina? Like the ship name? Well, in Malina, we get the trope with Mal and Alina being childhood best friends from their orphanage Karemzin, and yeah, they do eventually end up together. And now, let's talk about Jenya Safin. Out of all the characters in this trilogy, I would say that I love Jenya the best. She's a very kind friend to Alina, and she's just a queen. About her though, we don't really get that much about her past and her upbringing, and I'm really keen about that. There's some sort of hinted thing about her and the king, and I don't know if it was just me or someone else felt it. So here's the thing. When it was implied that something was going on between Jenya and the king, through Jenya's line, I want you to be careful. Of what? Powerful men. That simple line just made me think that the king was using her as a slave, and I wonder how that's going to be touched upon in the next books. But anyway, speaking of Jenya, I don't think I can't not mention David Caustic, who was a fabricator and Jenya's crush. Not gonna lie, I find them so cute together, despite the fact that the two of them are pretty much polar opposites. Jenya's kind, confident, a bit loud, and so beautiful, while David is quiet, unsure, reserved, and almost always covered in dirt because of his inventions. But still, I love them so much. And now, let's head to Zoya Nazielenski. Zoya, I've heard a lot of good things about her. There's so much talk about her, and they're just saying that she's just so cool and awesome and all that stuff. But let me tell you, Zoya's really mean. She's proud, loud, and absolutely horrible to Alina. She's like that because apparently Zoya likes Mal, and she can't be with him because of Alina. Mal has seemed to be a bit attracted towards Zoya though, 
But then again, he loves Alina and not her. Zoya is a squalor, meaning a person who could control winds and storms. And let me tell you, her power is basically describing her personality. She's so stormy and irritated around Alina, and she honestly made me pretty annoyed with her. I don't hate her though, because I'm still finding out the reason as to why people love her so much. I didn't feel that in this book, and I'm wondering what I'll feel about her by the end of the series, and probably by the end of Rule of Wolves. But anyway, I didn't like Zoya. Next, let's talk about the Darkling. Okay, so entering the Grishaverse fandom, I knew I was going to come across him. There's so much hype about him, seeing how he's so misunderstood and actually a victim or something like that. And right now, since I finished this book, I would say that he's none of that. With all honesty, in the first few chapters of this book, I actually liked him. He was really charming and kind to Alina, and sadly, that was all just an act. When I realized that he betrayed her, I got mad to the point that I think I practically hated him. He lied about the black heretic, and it turns out that he was the black heretic, and that he faked his death multiple times just to gain more influence, identities, and a lot more. So with people saying that he's a misunderstood person and a victim, I highly disagree. You can agree with that all you want, but for me, he isn't. I know that he's trying to do all of this for Ravka's sake, but he became insane with it, not realizing the drastic effects of what he was doing. With that being said though, I think the reason why there's more Darkling fans is because of the TV series. By now, I've watched all the episodes, and I have to say, they made the Darkling so soft and kinder than he was in the books. They did make him seem like a victim, and I didn't really like that. The Darkling did a lot of bad things, and I don't agree with showing him as a victim. And sure, the Shadow Fold was an accident, but the reasons why he did it differs from book to film. In the book, he really wanted to experiment with Merzost, or illegal magic, and he was consumed by it. He really wanted to do it out of hunger for power, whereas the TV series state that he did it because he was desperate to save his loved one. They made the audience sympathize with him, which I don't really like because that's sort of changing the Darkling from the books. What I really liked about this book was the writing style. Coming from the third person perspective of the Six of Crows duology, I was wondering if Lee Bardugo's first person perspective would still be a good one. And it did end up as a good thing. I loved Alina's perspective, but I did prefer the Six of Crows duology writing style over this one. So at this point, I'll answer the question, what did I feel about the Netflix version of these characters? So, I'll answer this with one character at a time. Let's start with Alina. So, here's her book version, and this is her TV series version. Alina's casting was pretty spot on in my opinion, and she did look like the Alina I knew from the books. With that being said though, I think I preferred Netflix Alina over book Alina because of some changes they made. I don't know if it was just the actress, Jessie Mae Lee, who made this happen, but in the Netflix show, Alina is happier and optimistic, whereas in the book, she's more sulky and pessimistic. I do like this change, however, because this just creates a lighter mood than what we had in the book. But what I didn't like was the fact that they also made a change in Alina's heritage. Instead of making her pure Ravkan like she was in the books, they for some reason decided to make her half shoe, and we're told that via Alina's voiceover in the first episode. I live in East Ravka, but I've never been welcome here. Because I look like my mother, and she looked like the enemy. Alina, how can you do that in here? Bumps help with texture. The fold looks different on mine. I need to get a better view from your country. She grew up here. Come on. The Shuan didn't want her either. So I don't know why Lee Bardugo agreed with it. Some people are saying that they decided to do it because there's little to no representation about Shu Han in the books, and that's the reason why they decided to add the detail, but I didn't like it. One of the main reasons why Alina wanted to fight the Darkling was because it would destroy her home, which is Ravka, obviously, and she has the full reason to it, because she's pure Ravkan, and Ravka was her home. But making her Shu would make people not really like her because of the ongoing war among Ravka and Shu Han, and this would make her feel isolated because of her heritage. 
I mean, we do see the dismissive attitude people get around Alina, and this might trigger her into not actually wanting to fight the Darkling, because Ravka never felt like a home to her. Then again though, with the removal of Alina's sulky and I hate that I'm a Grisha and I want to be normal, why does this have to happen to me attitude, Netflix Alina would want to save Ravka despite the country's attitude towards her. She's noble and optimistic enough to do what she did in the Netflix show. So now, let's head to Mal. So this is the book version, and this is the TV series version. Before I give my opinion, I have to say that this is just what I think. Little bit of a disclaimer because my opinion might be a bit controversial. So when I first got a look of Mal from the Netflix version, I was a bit taken aback because he didn't really look like anything to Mal to me. Plus, this is no offense to the actor or anything like that, but I expected Mal to be a bit more handsome than he was. I mean, it's stated in the books that Mal is quite a heartthrob and he has a lot of girls turning their heads at him because he was just that handsome. Like even Zoya Nazielenski herself liked him, which is saying something because Zoya wouldn't like someone for nothing. Despite that though, I think that the actor was able to do Mal's character some justice, but they made Mal kinder than he was in the book. In the book, Mal isn't really shown to be in love with Alina from the start, but the TV series made Mal care about Alina even more than he did in the book. I mean, Mal did care about her, like they were childhood best friends, but he didn't do some things the filmmakers made him do. Starting off with that scene where Mal chased after Alina when she was taken never happened in the book. In the TV series, we can see Mal's desperation to get Alina, but back in the book, he didn't do it. After what happened in the fold with Alina revealing her sun summoner abilities, Mal didn't seem to care about what happened to her. He didn't try to chase her like what he did in the show. He seemed indifferent. Also, in the book, he was scared about Alina's powers, but in the show, he didn't show that. Instead, he accepted them, which is something book Mal should learn from, because Mal in the books didn't know what to feel about Alina being a Grisha. In fact, the argument they had in this book was because of Alina being a Grisha and how she was becoming a new person because of the little palace. For me, I like Mal from the Netflix show better, because I just feel like he's kinder and more mature than the Mal we got from the books. And now, let's head to Zoya. Like Alina, I think Zoya's casting was pretty spot on. She got the personality Zoya had, but my only complaint was that Zoya switched to Alina's side a bit too quickly. In the book, Zoya practically worships the Darkling and craves for his attention every single day. And by the end of this book, Zoya doesn't turn to Alina's side that easily. In fact, she wasn't even on that ship when they entered the fold. Overall though, I think the casting was pretty good despite the fact that they made her ally with Alina too soon. So next is Jenya. Now this one, I think it's pretty well done too. We were able to see Jenya's abilities as a tailor, and we got a bit of a hint on the relationship she had with the king, and I love that detail so much. No offense to the actress or anything like that, but I feel like Jenya should have been a bit more beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I think the actress is pretty, but it just doesn't live up to Jenya's drop dead gorgeous description like it was in the book. She does demonstrate Jenya's personality, except for Jenya's confidence. Netflix Jenya is more on the awkward side, like how she talked to David in this scene. Very lovely. See you at the fade. Okay, so I know for a fact that the filmmakers are trying to make tension between the two of them and hint on Jenya's feelings. But I would have preferred it if Jenya flirted with David and David would be the awkward one, because that's how it was in the book. Jenya's the person who would keep hitting on David and David would be the awkward one, trying to understand what Jenya was doing to him. In this scene though, both of them are awkward, which I guess is okay, but it just isn't the case in the book. Jenya has her pride and her confidence, and she would never be awkward. Next is the Darkling. Out of almost the entire cast of Shadow and Bone, the Darkling has to be the best casting ever because Ben Barnes, aka the actor who plays the Darkling, is so spot on in his character. Sure, he is a bit older than the Darkling from the book, 
but there's just something about him that makes him the perfect choice to play the Darkling. It's in the way he delivers the lines, the coolness and smoothness of his voice, and the way he just acts registers the Darkling to me. Plus, I love the fact that the actor actually read the book before getting into the show, because that would explain why he was such a great choice for the Darkling. Like I said earlier, they made the Darkling pretty soft, and a more pitiful character than he was in the book, and I would have to say that that is not on the actor. That was on the screenwriter who wanted that kind of mood to the audience. I don't entirely agree with making the Darkling that way, but overall, Ben Barnes is such an amazing actor who nailed his role so much. So how about you? How did you find this casting? Let me know in the comments down below.